and today I'm gonna talk about language and meaning here we go this lecture we're gonna discuss a number of points related to meaning in human language and basically we're gonna talk about what is meaning and how to study it number two the difficulty of working out meaning number three the stereotype theory and number four lexical relations these are the main topics we're gonna talk about this in this lecture okay yes first what's meaning it's a very puzzling question and philosophers linguists psychologists cognitive linguists sociologists and so many scientists uh, and people who are in where or uh, still interested in meaning have tackled this question and so far there has been no satisfactory answer because to study meaning and to define meaning and to account for it this is something very very difficult however let's um, tell you some uh, simple points related to uh, this very key and puzzling and controversial issue which is meaning a basic first basic function uh, of human language is to express and communicate meaning and imagine language without uh, having this uh, ability and this function can we uh, do without uh, meaning can we communicate? Can we pass information from one person to another? Can we uh, conceptualize things and uh, uh, share ideas and messages uh, with others? Um, how can we live without uh, having this function of language which is to communicate meaning, to express meaning? meaning um, is not necessarily lying in language. We can find meaning in uh, in everything around us. If you see, um, let's say, a plant which is uh, not fresh um, and pale uh, and withering, this means that it is um, it it needs some water. It needs some sunlight. If you find uh, someone who is hurrying. What is the meaning of this? It means that he has something urgent, he is uh, hurrying for, uh, and so on. Uh, if you find also someone um, uh, wearing uh, very expensive clothes, what is the meaning of this? Uh, well, what is the message? It, it means that this one or this person is a well-to-do person and uh, someone who is rich and etc okay so meaning is everything is around us if you find the smoke what is the meaning of smoke it means that there is fire and, and so. Uh, so when we talk about language uh, and meaning in language we specify the concept of meaning to meaning fi found in words and in sentences and in uh, texts and and so on Okay, uh, so we move to the study of meaning, which is what, what, what type of, of science that studies meaning? We find that it's semantics, and semantics is uh, simply uh, defined as the scientific study of uh, meaning, and basically meaning abstracted from context, meaning per se, meaning of words and meaning of sentences. We don't care when we study semantics, we don't care about the social aspects of meaning uh, uh, the, the, or, or, with, or uh, the, uh, the meaning as it is intended by speakers. 
uh, we don't care about this we don't care about the context we care only about meaning you perceive meaning as it is meaning abstract from context this is uh, a, a very diff a very important difference between two sciences which two linguistic sciences which study meaning one is uh, um, semantics and the other is uh, the other is pragmatics of course there are other sciences linguistic sciences which study meaning but these are the two main uh, uh, branches of linguistics which basically tackle meaning okay uh, we have uh, mm, mm, two kinds at least or many kinds of uh, semantics we have lexical semantics which deal with how uh, meaning is created uh, through words and through morphemes uh, we're gonna ask ourselves uh, are words the smallest meaning units or we can find meaning in wor in units uh, smaller than uh, words for example the word uh, uh, cat um, this is a noun cat okay this is a morpheme and s is another morpheme uh, so, uh, although s is or s is another morpheme and it's a, a grammatical morpheme it's a bound one it's not it cannot stand alone but it gives a very important piece of information which is that we don't have one individual cat we have a number of cats so it's not singular it's plural okay um uh, also lexical semantics deals with the relationships uh, between words and how meaning is identified when we study these relationships these lexical relationships between words uh, lexical uh, semantics also study how words can be ambiguous how language can be ambiguous and uh, can ha uh, can let's say a sentence or a word can have more than one meaning how can we work out this ambiguity it's through studying context it's through studying context and here we mean context of the sentence you understand and the second uh, kind of uh, lex of uh, semantics is called sentence semantics here we we look at how grammar is working in uh, making word orders and in, in putting rules uh, illustrating or governing how words come together and how meaning is created by not only by words but by grammar as we're gonna see here we have as i told you a very important thing which is the difficulty of working out meaning it's so difficult it's so puzzling it's so controversial but at least at least we can have some meaning with by uh, uh, dealing with or drawing on two important elements number one the meaning of words you know the meaning of words and also we need to understand every detail of the grammatical structure of a sentence so in order to work out the meaning of a sentence we look at the individual words and their meanings and also we must understand every detail of the grammatical structure of the sentence you understand let's look at these examples the dog bit the milkman the dog bit the postman here we find that the two sentences share the same structure okay subject verb and object but they are different and they don't give the same meaning they are different in meaning because we change words the milkman and the postman okay look at number three the dog is biting the postman okay what's the difference between between number uh, two and the number three the difference here is intense and this why uh, there is some sort of difference in meaning this tells us that to change words this gives difference in meaning to change tense this gives difference in meaning look at number four it's so r interesting by the way the postman the postman pit the dog here the sentence uh, grammatically it's okay 
but semantically semantically it's not okay why because it violates some a very important uh, 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 law which is selection of destruction uh, what is it words that are supposed to go to go together bit cannot go with dog bit bit ca cannot be followed by dog it's not it's not the postman who is bit but it's the dog who, which bits and so on uh, which bit so in here we find that the postman cannot bit the dog the postman cannot bit the dog because bit and the dog cannot come together cannot go together and this is why it's very uh, interesting it's a very interesting example and we have to look at it as something that violates selection restrictions uh, which has to do with uh, how words go together. Uh, uh, let's take another example. The core eats. Uh, what's the problem here? Uh, the core cannot go with the word eats because the core is an uh, inanimate. Uh, it's not a living thing. It cannot eat. And therefore, this, this, the whole sentence turns on grammar. Here we come to a very important uh, principle, which is called Frege's principle of composition of compositionality, and uh, this is um, after uh, the uh, German philosopher Frege, uh, who said that we have at least two important elements that allow us to create meaning and to work out meaning. Number one, words and the meaning of words, to identify the meaning of words, and number two, to understand every detail of the grammatical structures. So the meaning of a sentence is the uh, totality of the meaning of every individual word in this sentence. So if you look at this example, the dog bit the milkman. And the, the total meaning, the total meaning of the sentence is a result of adding the meaning of the, to the meaning of dog, to the meaning of bit, to the meaning of the, to the meaning of milkman. And also to make some grammatical uh, it is decisions. For example, the and the dog go together, uh, the and milkman go together, bit and the and milkman uh, go together. So we must understand the syntax of the sentence, how, how words combine to make phrases and how phrase combine to make clauses or sentences. This uh, what we mean by Frege's principle of compositionality. How words and grammar uh, make meaning and these are the least, the least we can depend on in order to create and work out meaning. Okay? Let's move to another uh, part. Okay? Lexical semantics. As I told you before, we're gonna talk about meaning of individual words and meaning of words in relation to the meaning of other related uh, words. Um, let's go more and go further. What the meaning of, let's talk about the meaning of words. If I ask you what the meaning of the word dog, okay? First of all, we should know that words are, are, ha, are have a, arbitrary meanings. They don't have uh, some sort of logical relationship uh, or connection between uh, their, their reference in uh, reality or in the outside world. You understand? There is no logical relation between the word book, for example, and the object we know as book. Okay, it's, you know, words are labels that we as human beings or as a society or members of community agree to give to an object in reality or in the outside world. For example, the word tree, it's a symbol to what? To an object, which is a plant that has shades, that has branches, that has roots, that can give fruits and so on so uh, there is no logical relationship between words and objects 
or words and things. What happens is that we give names, we give um, words as symbols or names to things in order to identify them and we agree as members of a whole community that we're gonna give this object, this word and so on. For example, the word cat. Uh, in, in a particular community, they call it, uh, they call this uh, animal which is four legs, that is a pet animal, etc. Uh, cat. In another community, they call it kutta. In a third community, they call it something else. So, oh, a name or a word is something we agree on as a society and as a community. And, and this applies also to all names, even personal names, even personal names, okay? And why do we name things? In order to help us grasp them and categorize and, ta and make taxonomies of things around us in this world, because this world is so huge and we need to contain it, we need to store it in our very small skulls in our brains and this is why we need to categorize everything around us into categories and store an ideal member of, the, of every ca category in our brain to refer to them when we look at these uh, at uh, what they refer to uh, in reality okay so let's look at the lexeme, lexeme, look at the word here. The word lexeme um, means word, okay? Lexeme means word. Uh, and it's common, it's, it's, not, it's, it's less common than the word, word. And that's why we, got, we say the lexeme word, okay? Or the uh, lexeme dog and the real life animal. What is the relationship between them? As I told you, there is no logical relationship. It's an arbitrary relationship. It's something that we agree on uh, uh, as members of society to give the animal uh, that we uh, gonna find or talk about now, this name, which is dog. In other uh, communities, they call it kalb, مثلا. Kf, lamb, uh, So here, these are different uh, labels and different names and different words and different symbols to the same animal uh, or the same object in reality and so on. Uh, let's look at uh, this um, definition, the dictionary definition of the uh, word dog. We find that the, dic the dictionary uh, gives us the following names. Number one, a domesticated carnivorous uh, mammal that typically has a long, sn a long snout an acute sense of smell, and uh, non-retractable clothes, and a barking, howling, and whining voice. This is definition number one. If you look at it, you will find that it is full of words which are so difficult to, to define and so difficult to generalize. For example, dof domesticated, okay, and carnivorous mammal. The word mammal here. Uh, is still controversial. Uh, even uh, 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 zoologists, people who are specialized in studying animals, they do not agree on giving a, a, a unified definition of the word mammal. Uh, if you look at the word carnivorous and they look at its uh, synonyms, for example, uh, it means a flesh eating, it's meat eating. Uh, so we're gonna find, uh, we're gonna see that not all dogs are uh, meat eaters. Uh, look at the rest of the um, of the uh, definition. It has long snout. Snout here means what? Let's look at uh, the uh, synonym. It means nose. It has a long nose. Uh, so uh, w w if you apply this to an animal with a long nose, we uh, we can find that there are many animals which have longer noses than uh, than the dog uh, and also an acute sense of a smell uh, dogs are not the only animals which have this characteristic or this uh, uh, skill or this capacity uh, or we have non-retractable clothes and a parking howling and winning voice we find that uh, there are some uh, some dogs which do not 
work as we gonna see okay let me move to this uh, yes look at this uh, these are different breeds of uh, of dogs you see how they are different in uh, in size and different in uh, in features look at this uh, at this uh, dog and look at it's a her uh, or, or it's a fur okay you know as if as if he is combing his fur i like it and look at the the other look at this it looks like uh, a goat uh, look at this it looks like you know uh, very furry and very looks it looks like a small um, a small lion uh, and this one it looks like a, a, a cat you know so different kinds and different breeds of of what of uh, of dogs so one definition cannot apply to all these one simple definition cannot apply to all these uh, variations in what we call uh, dogs okay and uh, let's look at another uh, yes these are dogs which do not bark if you go back to this definition if you go back to this definition they are barking okay you know one of the definition of dogs is that they are barking but here we find that these are breeds of dogs that do not bark does this mean that they violate the definition yes they violate the definition but we are gonna uh, say that uh, uh, to give a definition is so difficult and it's it doesn't apply to everything and you will find exceptions but how can we deal with that let's wait um yeah let's move to another kind of uh, dogs with no fur with no fur look at this you know no fur at all does this mean that the definition doesn't apply yes it, do it doesn't apply to uh, all the and look at this yes this is an example of uh, a dog vegan dogs you know dogs of which you do not eat meats you know it contradicts with what with uh, uh carnivorous uh, uh, mammal uh, which means that uh, a mammal uh, that uh, eats meat you understand uh, so these are different variations which tells us uh, which tell us that it's so difficult to provide a definition it's uh, it's so uh, you know chaotic so chaotic because we have so many many things so how can we in, in in reality how can we deal with such variations and such you know uh, chaos of, or in some of, uh, let me you use it you know this lack of organization things are so difficult for us to 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 tackle but we find that our brain has a very uh, interesting uh, ability it's the ability of generalization it's the ability of abstraction it's the ability of uh, of uh, doing with the um, you know with the um, with the number of uh, features that must be there in order to say whether uh, uh, the definition applies to uh, the word dog or not um, so we or all uh, the again, all uh, forms of uh, or all breeds of dogs as we say as we look here do not do not go with this uh, definition but we consider for example that these are all dogs why because we abstract we generalize we don't look at uh, minute and the small differences we look at the bigger pictures the bigger features the main features we find that these dogs uh, share so many things and we capitalize on these shared elements and shared characteristics and we forget or neglect things which uh, make such differences okay um, so here let's go to uh, the theory which explains to us how do we identify uh, or uh, give a definition to uh, uh, the word dog 
or how can we understand the word dog um, without being able to provide uh, a, um, a definition for it. But before I, uh, I talk about this, let me go back to uh, the word dog, okay? We talked about the definition of the first definition that the, uh, uh, the dictionary uh, provided, um, but let's look at the second, also provided by the dictionary. Inform, uh, it is informal, you know, informal definition, a man or boy regards a unpleasant, contemptible, or wretched. Okay, so dog can refer to a boy and can refer to a man and it gives an unpleasant, it gives unpleasant connotations and meanings, you know. Uh, uh, also, you have U.S. informal, a male friend, you can, uh, someone can call his friend a uh, dog, you understand, and used as a term of address, slang, an attractive or a boring girl or a woman. Uh, the word dog can refer to a boring girl or a boring woman. Of course, of course, this definition is not what we look at here because what uh, because this is called uh, you know uh, we have uh, two kinds of meanings that we must uh, differentiate number one denotational meaning and this is what we see here you know uh, denotational meaning okay and the other is connotational meaning or associated meaning, connotational meaning or associated meaning, things which are not there in, uh, or which are, are not there in the, in the dictionary in the sense that uh, uh, some, something emotional, something associated. We associate women with dogs when they are boring. We associate men with dogs when they are unpleasant. Uh, uh, these are things which are, are not uh, denotational. Uh, direct no they are uh, connotational they are emotional they are uh, emotive and and this why to uh, agree on one meaning it's so tough to agree on one meaning. that's why we find that all dictionaries give uh, so many meanings for the same word so many meanings for the same word and it's what we call policy me as we're gonna see okay let's go back to uh, the stereotype theory and uh, this is a theory which explains to us what happens when we um, look at uh, 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 an animal and we call we call it a dog mm -hmm. what happens is that uh, out of all these things uh, and out of all these kinds of uh, dogs, our brains abstract a, a mental copy, you understand? A mental copy of dogs. We have, so in, in our brain, we have a mental copy for dogs, okay? And what happens is that, let's read what here, the idea here is that we carry in our heads as a result of our experience in life, a picture of a stereotypical, uh, a stereotypical dog. When we encounter a kind of dog, when we encounter, we see a dog, um, okay? We compare it with our mental, with our mental stereotype to see if the match is good enough. If it is, if it is good, we decide we are looking at the dog. If it isn't, we decide otherwise. So what we have is that we have a mental copy for everything we see in life. We have a mental copy for birds. So when we look at a sparrow, uh, uh, what happens is that I match the sparrow I see in reality and the sparrow allows for that I store in my mind a mental copy, a mental image of the sparrow, a mental image uh, look at your look at your uh, at your friend for example how do you know that your this is your friend the mona how when you see her okay you match between her in reality and the mental copy of your of mona stored in your mind 
when this matching happens and you find that the matching is okay or the match is okay so this is one and this what happens to us when we uh, or what happens to people who suffer from uh, some uh, injuries uh, and they lose uh, their linguistic abilities and uh, they, 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 they suffer from um, memory, memory loss uh, they cannot identify their friends and their family members because they lost they lost the mental copy they stored due to injury, due to trauma, due to, let's say, uh, an accident or something like that. You understand? So, stereotype theory has to do with a mental copy of everything we see in reality. And we match, we match this mental copy to the object or to the animal or to the person when we meet or encounter in reality. Okay, so, uh, here we have a, a very important uh, theory which is called semantic triangle. Look at it. Here we find the symbol or the word dog, okay, which is a sign, okay. And this is a reference. This is dog in reality. And what happens is that when I read, okay, when I read or I see or I listen or I hear the word dog, I recollect or revive. It revives in my mind a thought. A thought. And this thought is that it, a common animal with four legs, fur, and a tail, a mental copy. It revives, it activates the mental copy I store for the animal dog so the word look at the, the direction the word re, uh, uh, revives in my memory a mental copy for the uh, for the animal dog here i match between the mental copy here and the reference the animal or the dog when i see it in reality if there is a matching if i find that what i have matches what I see in reality, so I realize instantly that what I see is a dog and not a cat. This is what we call a, a semantic triangle. And therefore, we have a, a, a relationship between reference, the animal in reality, and the symbol or the word, which is dog. You understand? Um, now let's go to another element, which is lexical relations. Lexical, how do we understand the meaning of words? As we said, we understand the meaning of words by having uh, uh, some sort of mental cubbies that we store in our minds. Uh, we match with uh, things and objects in reality, and we tell whether it's what we uh, uh, we store or what it, 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 it accords with what we store or not. Now, let's correlations. We also understand the meaning of words when we, when we um, study them or when we look at them in terms of the meaning of words related to them. So words do not have meanings in isolation, okay? And uh, uh, the meaning of a word is related to the meaning of other words. And here we have a number of lexical relations. Some ways of relating, word, relating words is, number one, synonymy, uh, to have similar words, words with similar meanings. For example, start and begin, bail and bucket. They refer to the same thing, bail and bucket, you know? But in some areas we find that bail is, um, is, uh, is common, and the bucket is rustic. Rustic means that old-fashioned. And in other areas, we find that bucket is common and bale is rustic, you know? So it has to do with variation in dialects. Variation in dialects. We find also another example, uh, violin and fiddle. They refer to the same instrument, the same musical instrument. But violin is played in orchestra, in opera, in you know, in places uh, which are very prestigious. And fellow is played by, in streets, by people, by beggars, by 
people who who are asking man, money from uh, passerby, people in the street. So violence uh, is uh, socially socially ha is more prestigious than the word that or the, is more prestigious than fiddle. Although both words refer to the same instrument. Okay. Second. Uh, and we're gonna be come back to uh, synonymy, uh, okay? Just uh, let me, yes, see, let's see this uh, slide. It, it talks about synonyms or words with the same or similar uh, sense. The question is why do languages have uh, synonyms? Why do languages have synonyms? Uh, was it, um, or is it not enough uh, to have only one word denoting one meaning? So why do we have uh, uh, synonyms? If you look at English, you will find that because English has been influenced by many languages, uh, and English has borrowed words from all languages around the world due to its interaction with uh, local uh, languages, uh, we find that uh, for example, uh, English and French synonym. We have uh, king and sovereign. You know, king mm -hmm. is old English. It's an, it's old English, uh, English pure English. And sovereign is a borrowed word from from Norman French. So because when Fr the, when Normans came to England and they invaded it and French became the main language and the language of, of politics and the language of the elites and language of co the court and so on, we find that uh, many words uh, replace the English words. And later on with the Restoration Age, when English comes back, okay, we find that uh, uh, French words and English words uh, uh, coexist, coexist. So it we, we become we, uh, we 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 start to have um, multiple words, multiple synonyms for the same thing. If you look at ox and beef, ox is English and beef is French. Sheep and mutton, uh, folk and people, help and aid, begin and commence, end and terminate, hinder and prevent. You know, uh, so these are uh, the, the the words uh, uh, on the uh, on the left. Uh, are um, English and uh, on the right are French and they coexist as you see and this adds to the richness of the English language it's a wealth to the English language you understand so what happens is that borrowing from foreign languages can make lots of synonyms uh, if you look at another club another kind of uh, borrowing we have um, you know, uh, phrasal uh, verbs, uh, Germanic, and also Latin. For, so Germanic, Germanic, you know that English is a Germanic language, and uh, it has uh, it borrowed so many words from Germanic languages such as Dutch, German, uh, and Danish, and so on. And um, so we have catch up with, and we have reach. You know, uh, come back and return. Uh, give up and surrender, hold back and retire. And, and you may know that these uh, Germanic uh, phrasal verbs are very common in speech. Uh, and these Latin uh, uh, equivalents are very common in written language, in, the state, in written language. And these are colloquial, common uh, in speech, and these are more formal and uh, they are restricted or found uh, more uh, in uh, the written uh, language. You understand? Let's go back to antonomy, the second relation, uh, lexical relation, antonomy. And antonomy means opposite means. We have um, uh, young, old, and so on. So let's go to um, different, we have here different kinds of antonomy. Uh, number one, gradable antonym. Gradable. Here we have grade. We have hot, and we have, <coughs> let's say, cold. Okay, and between them there are degrees: warm, lukewarm, tepid, and so on, and cool and cold. So 
it's not a matter of either or or either or or black and white no we have degrees these are called degradable antonyms so if i ask you what kind of antonym um, is uh, this pair hot and uh, cold you're gonna say that it's degradable because we have in between different different degrees different degrees you understand um let me uh, go to um another kind uh, or another uh, yes this we have antonym types okay and uh, let's see we have gradable such as smart and uh, and uh, stupid often and rarely fat and thin most and least up and down tall and short and so on and here we can have smart smarter and smallest and smartest and we can have stupid uh, more stupid and most stupid so you can have grade use the or e s t or more or most and so on okay you can say fatter and fattest thin thinner and thinnest and, and so on uh, if you look at another kind of uh, antonym types which are called uh, you know uh, ungradable ungradable teacher and student they are not antonyms in the strong sense of the word they are complementary they complement teacher and student friend and enemy uh, if there is a teacher there is a student if there is a friend there is an enemy if there is a question there is an answer doctor patient mother father parent child and so on let's move to another category and here we have complementary yeah Com this is sorry this relational and this complementary complementary means they are binary binary either or nothing in between they do not have grades they do not have degrees you know dead and alive before and after permit and prohibit proceed and follow send and receive beginning and 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 day and night understand Let's go back to the uh, third, uh, the third uh, lexical relation, which is hyponymy. And the hyponymy here, uh, it has to do with, uh, you know, taxonomy. It has to do with taxonomy, hierarchy, you know, hierarchy, bottom and up, bottom and up. Uh, let's look at this. Uh, we have, for example, uh, hyponyms. Uh, and hypernames. Hypernames are those uh, at the bottom, and hypernames are those at the top. Flower. So flower is a hypername to a hyponym, which is rose. You understand? So let's go to an example here. And hyponymy. We have color, uh, which is a hypername, the uh, at the top, and we have uh, purple, red, blue. And, and green these are what these are hyponyms hyponyms to uh, the hyponym color and the the uh, the hyponym uh, purple could act as a hyponym to other kinds or other shades of uh, purple for example we have crimson violet and lavender and uh, what's the relationship between uh, uh, red and and blue they are cool hyponyms so we organize words either as synonyms, uh, as we see here, uh, or we organize them as uh, antonyms, uh, as we see here, and also as we see uh, here. Okay, okay. And we have also other ways to organize or understand. Or if I ask you, what is the meaning? Of, what is rose? Define rose. Okay, rose. You're gonna say that it's a flower you know very easy what what kind of relationship uh, have you used it is the relationship of hyponymy if i ask you what is begin you're gonna say it means start so how did how did you define uh, begin it's by referring to its synonym or it's by by when you say begin and you say end how how did you uh, identify or define start here you, or begin here it's by uh, mentioning its antonym its opposite so words are identified 
and meanings of words are identified by uh, studying the relationship uh, between words. Let's look at uh, this hyphenate. Uh, go back to our uh, lexical relations we haven't finished yet. We have, um, yes, uh, hyponymy, and also we have homonymy words, uh, which have, uh, sorry, uh, it's a uh, homophony, uh, it's, let's read, uh, homophony, mo, bh, bh, yes, homophony, homophony, yeah, and homophony here means that words which have same pronunciation, different meanings, uh, and we have examples such as, you know, uh, the word uh, bank uh, and the word uh, let's say apple uh, the, uh, the word the bank uh, sorry the word uh, bank we find that um, no this blossomy and uh, let's say for example the word right you know uh, w r i t e and the word right r i g h t they share the same pronunciation but they have different meanings. Also, if you look at the another uh, uh, lexical relation, which is polysemy, uh, one word, uh, but it gives uh, multiple meanings. For example, apple, uh, uh, it can refer to fruit, and it can refer to part of your eye, the apple of my eye, no, uh, sorry, or part of, um, you know, uh, uh, something that, uh, can give other meanings. Uh, we have also bank, uh, a building, uh, financial institution, and bank of uh, a river. The word train uh, um, can refer to a means of transportation, and it can refer to uh, an activity uh, where one is acquiring some skills. You understand? And uh, so uh, we have uh, also, bil uh, polysemy, uh, one word, and uh, uh, yes, I, I described it. So here, we, uh, or in this lecture, we discussed um, what's m meant by meaning, and uh, how can we identify it, um, and what are the least uh, things that we should have in order to uh, to uh, arrive at the meaning of uh, things. This is what we uh, said before, uh, that w we have at least two elements, meaning of words, and also to understand the grammatical structure of sentences. And uh, we uh, talked about uh, uh, how to give a definition of a word and how it is difficult to provide such a definition. Um, and uh, we talked extensively uh, uh, about uh, the word dog, and uh, then we talked about the stereotype theory and how it explains that we have mental copies, you know, don't forget this, mental copies of uh, things uh, that are stored in our mind, and we make some sort of match, you know, to uh, see if what we see is what we uh, store in our mind or not. And, um, then we have uh, uh, lexical relations, uh, how words can, uh, uh, can give meaning through uh, uh, being related to the meaning of other uh, words, and we say synonymy, antonymy, hyponymy, homophony, lexical, and also finally lexical f fields. Words also can be grouped under um, uh, under something called the lexical field. For example, if I say uh, 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 the word sport, what are the words that are uh, connected to the word sport? You're going to say um, crowds, stadiums, referees, money, FIFA, World Cup, uh, uh, coaches, players, Muhammad Salah, and so on and so forth. So every field in life and every domain of knowledge is a sort of lexical or semantic field, semantic field that is a web of related words. So we, in our in our brains, we categorize knowledge in around us in the words through 
uh, or in the form of semantic fields or lexical fields in order to grasp as much knowledge as we can uh, uh, in uh, our uh, brain and store uh, them in our brain. Okay, the story of uh, of uh, of meaning is uh, not yet um, finished, and uh, uh, inshallah, the next time we're gonna uh, talk about uh, so many other things uh, on meaning uh, uh, to uh, complete our journey of uh, uh, figuring out and working out uh, uh, a definition. Uh, and a full understanding of the word meaning. Thank you.